Welcome to our daily video devotion from Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Tim Gerving. Today we will take a closer look at a statement that was written by Luke in his gospel. We'll read from Luke chapter 22, verse 3. Luke wrote, Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. When you read the Bible, most of what is written there should surprise us. But as you grow familiar with the Bible, you can easily miss the surprise. Uh, for example, we're usually not surprised when we read about Jesus chastising Pharisees, having some kind of argument with them. And that's because we become familiar with Pharisees. We've come to know that uh, they're mostly hypocrites who mostly hate Jesus and that they're always trying to desperately uh, discredit Jesus and turn the Jewish people against him. We assume that if we had lived in Jesus' day, we would have seen right through the uh, Pharisees' hypocrisy and would have recognized them for what they were. When actually it's more likely that we would have come to the same conclusion that Jesus' disciples had which was, Jesus, how can you be so mean to Pharisees? They are God-fearing, church-going people. They teach God's word. They do the best they can to get Jews to live according to what Scripture says. If the, Jesus, if the disciples were surprised by Jesus, I think for sure that we would have been surprised too. In the verse that Luke wrote that I just read to you, there is a surprise. The first thing that Luke says is that Satan entered Judas. That's not a surprise. Judas had become a greedy man. He loved money. He was entrusted to be the treasurer for Jesus and the disciples. Uh, he was known to let a little money slip into his pocket now and again, and uh, the Bible shows Judas looking for opportunities for the group to make money so that you know he could skim off the top. The second thing we're told is that Judas was one of the twelve. Now, it's not really a surprise that one of the apostles would be greedy and a thief. All twelve men, all twelve apostles, showed weaknesses in their character at one time or another. After all, Jesus only had sinners to choose from. But here's the thing. None of those men volunteered to be an apostle. It was Jesus who chose these particular 12 men to be his apostles. They were chosen by him for a special role in his church. Jesus knew full well that one day Judas would turn on him, would prefer to follow a money trail instead of Jesus, and for a fee, agree to deliver Jesus to his enemies, which would eventually lead to Jesus' sham trials and his death. Here's the surprise that Jesus chose Judas to be one of the twelve anyway. Now, if someone were to ask, well, why would Jesus do that? The easy answer is to fulfill all scripture, and that's true. Jesus had to fulfill everything that was foretold in the Old Testament, and that included what the Old Testament had said about how one of his close companions— would kick up his heel against Jesus, would betray him. But there is another answer. In spite of knowing beforehand what Judas would do to him, Jesus clearly loved Judas. He strongly desired to save Judas. He longed for Judas to repent and to turn away from greed and to find in Jesus the answer to all that Judas was missing in his life to find merciful love and forgiveness and, and a life of unending joy with, with Christ. I find knowing this about Jesus to be especially comforting. He did not choose me or you because he saw something worthy in us. He chose us because we are unworthy and that and because he knew that there was nothing that we could do to change that about ourselves. 
He chose to live and die for us and to give us life and to do that also by giving us faith in him and what he did for us. No matter what kind of person I have been, no matter what sins I keep falling to, I can be assured that Jesus is not looking to find a reason to condemn me, but to forgive me and to help me. Let's not ever forget that. Amen.